I said previously that inside the body tags are where we're going to put the content for our page. But what I'm going to do is force the page to divide up even further. So I'm going to set some strict boundaries in the page so that content can only go in certain areas. The tags I'm going to use are the div tags, which are divisions in the web page. I need to name my division so that I know what that division actually is and the page knows what that division is. The code for that is open bracket div space id equals speech marks the name for your div speech marks bracket and then at the bottom it is open bracket slash div close bracket and I've put in here a open bracket exclamation mark dash dash container dash dash close bracket to go through and show what the actual container is. As we go through and we put more and more divs in, we're going to have the top bar at the top here named div, but we're going to have lots of just open bracket slash divs at the end. This green text allows me to code the page it will name what that div actually closes. This open bracket exclamation mark dash dash is recognized by HTML as a no-show text. So anything between these brackets here will not show up. It means we can put notes inside our HTML to give us a hint of what we're actually doing. The next stage that we want to move into is putting our navigation bar in. So to do that, I'm just going to go back into Notepad and outside of the content I'm going to put in the navigation code. Just another div code that starts with div ID navigation and ends with backslash div with the code navigation so that I know which div belongs to what. You'll notice when in Publisher the navigation sits outside of the content. If I want to have a look and see where our web page is at the moment. I can save that content. I can go into my Web Design One folder and I can open up this HTML. And again, it looks like nothing has changed. And the reason nothing has changed is because we haven't put any content in yet. All we're doing is setting up the structure for the content to go into so that it is divided and looks right as we start to build the web page up. We're almost finished the actual structural design of this web page. What we need to do now is put in the footer. So I'm going to paste my footer comments in, which go at the end of the navigation. So it's just div ID footer and the div tag, and you'll notice that all of these divs are sitting inside the container. To illustrate this, we'll go back to our concept design, and we'll see that our footer is now at the bottom of our document. It's placed in. So we've got the overall container, we've got our content, we've got our navigation, and we've got our footer. I originally had this header document here, but we don't need it anymore because the header document is going to go straight inside the container tags of our document. Underneath that, our content and our navigation tags will be held in check by this footer tag that goes at the bottom. It's now time to put content into our web page. The first bit of content I want to put in is not going to go into the content div. It's going to go into the container div. It is going to be the information that I want to show at the top or the header of my document. We're making a CV about Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the internet per se. And so I want the information, I want his name to appear at the top of the page. At the moment we've got all this text on our page, but none of it should be showing up on the actual real document except for the page name that says Tim Berners-Lee Curriculum Vitae. Let's actually have a look. We'll save that document, minimize the screen, go into our folder Web Design one open up index.html, and there is no content on the page. We do have a title for the page, and that's it. 
that's not very useful at the moment so what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll try putting the Tim Berners-Lee title in. So I'm going to go into the container making sure I'm writing inside the container and I'm going to put my first title. I'm going to use H1 tags for a heading 1 tag and that's all I'm going to do. Tim Berners-Lee is going to go in there. If I save this page now and back into Web Design 1, into our index. We have now got Tim Berners-Lee that's showing up on our web page. This is where we're going to make quite a different approach than what normally happens with Web Design. In our Web Design, we've set our page up where we've got our dividers that divide the web page up, the divisions inside the web page, and we're starting to put content in. I am not going to stylize any of this content on my index HTML page because I am going to use cascading style sheets or CSS, a CSS file to go through and stylize my content. The reason I'm going to do this is because it gives me an easy opportunity to separate content and the way that content appears. Instead of putting it all together in one document, I'm going to separate it into two files so my cascading style sheet, my CSS file, will go through and quite clearly state, stylize my content. It seems like a little bit of extra work, and it is if you're only making a page that's one or two pages long, but if you were working on a much larger document, like the Burnside High School website, you wouldn't want to have to go through and change the content or change the heading size or change the color of the heading on every single page. You'd want to have a file where you can change it once and that's where our cascading style sheets are going to come in quite handy.